This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, my friends, to prayer on Wednesday, the 13th of September. This is the Eve of Holy Cross. Tomorrow, the Feast of the Holy Cross. We'll learn more about that tomorrow. But let's begin with a deep breath and then our opening responses. Christ became obedient unto death for us, even death upon a cross. Together, even death upon a cross. He was pierced for our sins, bruised for no fault but ours. Together, bruised for no fault but ours. His punishment has won our peace, and by his wounds we are healed. Together, and by his wounds we are healed. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Together, strength, honor, glory, and praise. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Psalm 119, today, verses 57 to 72. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who revere you and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge. For I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good, and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Let us pray. God, as your only Son revealed you still at work in your creation, so through Christ your living word, enable us to know your love and to share it with others. We ask this in his name. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mighty prophet Elijah enters the story today as we read 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 to 24. Here's a note from the Jewish Study Bible. Elijah predicts a drought. The mention of dew and rain challenges Ahab, king of Israel's notion that Baal, celebrated as God of fresh water, is responsible for them. Subsequent events suggest that the drought, limited to only Israelite territory and persisting for a long time, came to be seen as unnatural. At a theological level, the author of First Kings presents this story because Elijah's prediction resonates with Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 to 17, end quote. And what does Deuteronomy eleven thirteen to 17 say? If then you obey the commandments that I enjoin upon you this day, loving the Lord your God and serving God with all your heart and soul, I will grant the rain for your land in season, the early rain and the late. You shall gather in your new grain and wine and oil. I will also provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and thus you shall eat your fill. Take care not to be lured away to serve other gods and bow to them, for the Lord's anger will flare up against you, and he will shut up the skies so that there will be no rain and the ground will not yield its produce, and you will soon perish from the good land that the Lord is assigning to you. Let's now attend to the story in chapter 17. Elijah the Tishbite 
an inhabitant of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord lives, the God of Israel whom I serve, there will be no dew or rain except at my bidding. The word of the Lord came to him, Leave this place, turn eastward, and go into hiding by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You will drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Elijah proceeded to do as the Lord had bidden. He went and stayed by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan River. The ravens brought him bread and meat every morning and every evening, and he drank from the wadi. After some time the wadi dried up, because there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon, and stay there. I have designated a widow there to feed you. So Elijah went at once to Zarephath. When he came to the entrance of the town, a widow was there gathering wood. He called out to her, Please bring me a little water in your pitcher and let me drink. As she went to fetch it, he called out to her, Please bring along a piece of bread for me. As the Lord your God lives, she replied, I have nothing baked, nothing but a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am just gathering a couple of sticks so that I can go home and prepare it for me and my son. We shall eat it and then we shall die. Don't be afraid, said Elijah to her. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a small cake from what you have there, and bring it out to me. Then make some for yourself and your son. For thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not give out, and the jug of oil shall not fail, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the ground. The widow went and did as Elijah had spoken, and she and he and her household had food for a long time. The jar of flour did not give out, nor did the jug of oil fail, just as the Lord had spoken through Elijah. After a while, the son of the mistress of the house fell sick, and his illness grew worse, until he had no breath left in him. She said to Elijah, What harm have I done you, O man of God? that you should come here to recall my sin and cause the death of my son. Give me the boy, he said to her, and taking him from her arms, he carried him to the upper chamber where he was staying and laid him down on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, let this child's life return to his body. The Lord heard Elijah's plea, the child's life, returned to his body, and he revived. Elijah picked up the child and brought him down from the upper room into the main room and gave him to his mother. See, said Elijah, your son is alive. And the woman answered Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord is truly in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Elijah has fled from before Ahab. Remarkable faith he shows as he goes forward in a time of drought and upcoming famine to a city he does not know with only the promise of God to guide him that he would be provided for. In faith, he declares the Lord will make the flour and oil of the widow last as long as they need it. And so it is. And the family that took in the prophet is provided for. Here's an interesting note from the Jewish study Bible on the resuscitation of the child. Elijah attempted what is sometimes described as the first recorded case of artificial respiration on the child, who was critically ill but not dead. Then he prayed on the child's behalf. A healing procedure in some Mesopotamian incantations against demons instructs the healer to superimpose his body over that of the patient, head to head, hand to hand, foot to foot. Elijah's success as a wonder worker is what convinced the widow that he was indeed a prophet. In Israel, the power to intercede with God was considered a prophetic gift. End quote. Seems to me the editors of the note are a little bit skeptical of the, of the miraculous nature of this. They say he was critically ill but not dead, while the scriptures say he had no breath in his body, and when Elijah prayed over him, 
the child's life returned to his body and he revived. Whether the boy was dead or nearly dead, the Lord worked powerfully through the prophet to bring life and to make this family whole again. Thanks be to God. We now jump to Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. This includes a remarkable section called the kenosis passage. Kenosis is a Greek word for self-emptying referred to in this passage. It also contains one of the few hymns in the New Testament that we see embedded in the text because the kenosis passage is considered a hymn by most scholars. Philippians 2, 1 to 11. If, then, there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And now here we have the hymnic passage. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This beautiful reading outlines the way of Jesus the Christ. The way of upward mobility of exaltation is not climbing the corporate ladder, but is instead descending the stairs to the basement of humility in self-forgetful service. For those who are abased in service will be exalted. This is the path Christ trod. This too is to be our path. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy and help us. Lord, have mercy. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. Risen Savior, by your grace, fill us with the joy of your holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord together, Hear us, Lord of glory. O Lord, we ask that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Well, I'm especially thinking of churches persecuted in the Middle East, currently in India and in North Korea. For them, let us pray to the Lord, Hear us, Lord of glory, that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord together. Hear us, Lord of glory. O Lord, we ask that you may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. This day we pray for Rita, for Chris, for all seeking employment. Together, hear us, Lord of glory. O Lord, we ask that by your power, Wars such as in Sudan, Syria, and Ukraine. Famine and pandemic across the world may cease. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Lord, we ask that you would reveal the light of your presence to the sick, especially praying for Gabe, Keith, Dwayne, Karen, Michael, Shanta, Kavya, Jason, Richard, Ricardo, Dwayne, Oakley, and I invite your prayers for any on your hearts today. Lord, we pray for all the weak and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Lord, send the fire of your Holy Spirit upon your people, that we may bear faithful witness to your resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. 
Gathering our prayers, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. The Lord lift up his countenance and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Wednesday.